right? So today will be the one we didn't take last week, which is the fear of time, right? It's called chronophobia or poison new or prison neurosis. Another popular word for it is hurry sickness. You're always in a hurry, right? Uh, ever since I studied this years ago, I, I killed hurry in my life. Everything that I'm doing, I ensure Ori does not have a place for it, right? Where if I'm preparing, like I'm preparing for today, even though I was running out of time, I refuse to hurry. I refuse to be anxious. I refuse to be perturbed. You know, I, I refuse to be disorganized, right? Because what Ori comes to do is to disorganize you, is to kill your ability to listen, to the still small voice is to kill your ability to listen to your intuition. And for as long as you're not listening to your intuition, you're not making the best of the gift that is you. The gift that is you is your ability to listen to your inner voice, listen to your intuition, right? But Ori kills that, right? Fear kills that. You are then not able to come, bring your best self to the marketplace. You're not able to bring your best self to the world. You're not be able to bring your best self to do the things that consign your life, to move your life forward, right? So don't let time, don't let time get in your way. You know, whatever you need to do, just do your best and leave the rest. My experience, everything I'm about to prepare for, once I've done my best, I always have more than I need for that occasion more than I need for that occasion. Um, and the confidence with which I go, the rest with which I go, the peace with which I go, gives the power to what I am doing, right? So that's important. Don't let Ori kill you. Don't let Ori disorganize you. Don't let Ori steal, steal from you. Rise above Ori. Rise above the fear of time not being enough. Make, make use of what you have. And what you have is always going to be enough. For the tax ahead of you. Life will not present to you that which you cannot handle. Life will give you what you have strength for, ability for, right? So trust in time, trust in nature, trust in God, trust in yourself, right? So another fear, which is the night fear, is a fear of the unknown, or what we we'll call the fear of the known, or fear of change. Or, or, or fear of uncertainty, right? So it's, a, it, it, it is similar to the first one, but it, it's more in terms of um, not as much as it relates to others, but as much as it relates to yourself and information. And this will eat again on, on introverts a lot. And that is uh, because of just what we have, right? Because as an introvert, you're a deep thinker. And typically, we need information to process things by. And when we don't get information, we kind of become disorganized. We don't know how to uh, put data together to predict or be ready for, for what we are going into. That can easily become disorganized an introvert, right? But we should not be a prisoner of our personality. We should not be a prisoner of our supposed nature. We need to always rise above, rise above, be responsible, be, be proactive, right? Rise above, rise above, rise above, be tax oriented, right? Be, be, be objective oriented, right? And um, and go for it, right? Don't 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 give excuses, right? So if we have information, so good. If I don't have information, so be it. I work with what I have, you know, as I go through life, right? So there's this other quote here by Carla Murray. It says, when we choose to create a change, such as moving to a new home or shifting jobs, you know, the summary is just the fact that, you know, when change hits us, you know, we are scared of change, our change having a hopper hand of us. But we don't have to wait for change to eat us, right? We can change of our own volition. We can stay ahead of the curve and continue to evolve, 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 pivot, pivot, right? Continue to pivot, uh, pivot, you know, and be, and be ahead of the game. Don't let change force us to move. Let's move before we are forced to move, 
right? So let's pivot as we get the information from the uh, environment. We understand uh, the threats, the opportunities in the environment. Let's make the right adjustment before we are forced to, right? That's one way of overcoming this fear. So we're wired to, to fear change. So we should not allow change users, but we can use change. We can stay ahead of change, right? So the last fear we're going to look at is a fear of what is next. This is typically a fear that plagues the intelligent people. Uh, people that are not that intelligent don't plan for the future, right? But, but people that are intelligent tend to uh, stay ahead of the game and plan for the future. And when that future is seemingly not having the base or, or foundation that they need for it, you know, can turn into anxiety. You know, so much so they go into what we call panic attack, you know, because as they are planning for the future, they're doing that with fear, you know, and that fear makes them to lose their breath, you know, and losing their breath for some seconds is the physical manifestation of a panic attack, you know, because you, you, you are fearing danger, you're seeing demons on your part, you know, and and uh, that kind of destabilizes you. We need to rise above that. You must always approach life out of faith, not fear. Irrespective of what you think the future might be, you should always see, reframe it, reframe it, always reframe it, frame it in a way that 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 empowers you. Always frame it in a way that empowers you. What would typically would say is that don't believe any prophecy that does not empower you, irrespective of who is the person saying it or, or what the person is saying. Never believe a prophecy that does not empower you because you have the one that has the power over your life, not some false prophet, not some half drunk person. Right, you have the power over your life. Don't give it to another. Whatever prophecy does not empower you, don't give place to it. Don't give place to it in your life. You don't open a door to it. Right, you have the right to frame your future. You have the right to frame your present. That is what God has given to you. That's why God calls us God, God. God, how be it small God, God, we are created in the image and likeness of God. Only that which we allow has power over our lives, right? So you can control the gates. You can hold back the gate and not allow anxiety, fear, you know, come and, and, and lay hold of you, right? Uh, so quick one, look at how, how this appears in our life. If you have some of these and you don't know, you can't recognize it in your life. One of the ways you would see is you avoid it. You avoid responsibility. You know, you when you avoid responsibility, there's a fear factor that's that's driving you. You know, and you need to you need to look into that and not allow it uh, deprive you of life. You know, when you begin to procrastinate, there's a fact fear factor right that's evolved to procrastinate. Faith does not procrastinate. Love does not pro pro procrastinate. Perfectionism, you're trying to get everything right. <laughs> you know, that's fear, right? So don't give it place in your life. Uh, when you're always quitting, you're not staying to the hand. You know, that's fear. You know, when you're always self-sabotaging yourself, you're always uh, finding a way to make the things you're doing not to work. You know, making the uh, blocks to fall off and not to stay. That is fear, self-destructiveness also. When you're destroying yourself, you are becoming your own enemy, right? That only is done by fear. Only fear will bring you to that position, right? So what to do about it? Like we've said separately in this discussion, one of the things we can do about it is to, um, is, is to reframe. Right, we can reframe the situation, right? Say it in a way that empowers you. See good coming out of anything that is happening in your life, any encounter that's happening in your life. See good coming out of it. See the good because there's good in it. No matter how bad it is, there's good in it. So see the good that is coming out of the seeming bad, airplane situation. See the good 
you can reframe that it is your you have the right and you have the power to do it only you can tell your story your story right your interpretation of events in your life and that's what will make that difference for you it's your story that 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 heaven hears it's your story that the universe says it's your story that nature blesses your story that god says yes to so what story are you saying about your life what story are you saying about your today what story are you saying about your tomorrow that is what will come to pass in your life. So you are the creator. You are the determinant of your happy today and your happy tomorrow, right? And the other thing is, if there's something to be done, you know, do it. Your procrastination will only keep the fear alive. You know, the way to conquer fear is to go out and do what you need to do, what you can do. For as long as you're procrastinating, for as long as you're crying, staying indoors, you're only giving power to the fear. Do what you can do and see what you can do come to pass, right? Sometimes it helps to keep a journal. You know, our mind is not for retention. Our mind is for thinking, analyzing, and making decisions. Sometimes it helps to free the mind of the need to recollect. That's why we journal. Another way, reason why we journal is that it forces us to think. As we write about the event, we're able to think about it in a rational way and see things clearly, not the oblique picture that we're getting when everything is crowded in our head over a short period of time, right? Another thing that helps is reflecting, right? When we think backwards, 2020, I vision is backwards. You're able to learn from the things that happened backwards yesterday. Then that wisdom you're able to then use in your today and your tomorrow, right? You need to maybe sometimes find out the reason why you have that fear. When did that fear start in your life? What were the events that took place that, that brought that fear into your life? you lost something, something happened to you, you know, then you can then begin to address the demon in your life so that you can overcome it, right? Like uh, Carl Jung would say, you know, that uh, faith, there's nothing like faith, some, nothing like destiny, that this must happen to you or that. It's all about you not understanding the uh, invisible or the unconscious, and the unconscious then plays a trick at you. So it helps me to understand the, the unconscious drives in my life, the unconscious um, uh, inclinations in my life that seem to be pushing me one way or the other. You know, then I can make corrections if it's pushing me in the wrong way, right? Uh, it helps also to be able to visualize success because whatsoever you see is what you are drawn to. Whatsoever you see becomes bigger and becomes a giant or demon in your life, you know? So if you visualize success, then we are drawn to success, you know? It's a law of attraction, which we also call the law of visualization, right? Uh, also take care of yourself. The more we take care of ourselves, uh, exercise, eat well, sleep well, then we're able to think well, you know? So that's important in helping overcome fear. Self-awareness, know who you are, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, because only until you do that, you cannot then address the opportunities and the threats that are surrounding you. So it helps to be aware of who am I, what moves me, what shakes me, what motivates me, you know, so that helps. Also be gentle on yourself, right? You know, that's important if you can be gentle on yourself. That's important also. Uh, it helps to be, to be gentle on yourself, you know, so... Um, the other part here, you know, just more things talking about fear as we try and close this uh, today. Fear is a part of life. Marty Tona says fear is a part of life. Everyone has it. Everyone has fear. And no, and no amount of money or fame removes it, you know, because you know whether you're a millionaire, billionaire doesn't mean that fear will knock on your door. You're a bishop, hack bishop, prophet, or whatever. It doesn't mean your fear will knock on your door. Fear knocks on everyone's door. What you do about it is what's important, right? It's not the fear. It's what you do about it that's important, you know? And as uh, Matthew Turner would say, but those at the top never let fear do their thought, their talking, whereas those at the beginning of their journey often do. 
Don't let fear talk, talk uh, determine your life. Don't let fear has the, have the upper talk over your life, right? Talk to your mountain, talk to your fear, talk to your demon, you know, and put them in their place, right? So don't disregard nor deny your fear. That does not help. Accept them, challenge them, walk through, the, through and in spite of them, right? There is treasure in the high of a storm, right? It's about walking through it. It's not running from it. Uh, Gabriel Pestan says, I can think my way out of fear, right? If you can think, you'll find that fear is imaginary. Fear is not real. Fear is false evidence appearing real. When you think, your thought will help you dis dissolve it. You will see it's just mere fog. It's just mere smoke, right? But if you cannot think, then fear will have you, right? So thinking, having knowledge on the issue will deliver you from fear. What are you aware of what that fear might be, you know? And lastly, um, we have Frank uh, Herbert, you know, here says, I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer, right? It says, I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear, if you allow it, will deprecate your ability to think, your ability to reason, right? Your ability to use your conscious mind, right? Fear is a literal death that brings total obliteration, right? I will face my fear. I will permit I will permit it to pass over me and through me. When it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to it to see its path. Where the fear is gone, there will be nothing. Only high will remain, right? So don't allow fear win over you, right? Uh, Gabrielli here also says, I choose to reinterpret my fears with a more loving perspective, right? We talk about reframing. Don't let fear overcome you. You overcome fear, right? Overcome fear with faith. Overcome fear with love. Overcome fear, you know, with what you want, right? Don't let fear steal away your destiny. Don't let fear just steal away your dreams, you know? Uh, keep hold on to your dreams, right? And hold on in faith, hold on in love, right? That is the way to have a good life. We're here to live a good life not just live, not just exist, but to live a good life, to have a good success, right? You know, to be happy, to have healthy, life-giving relationships with our spouse, our children, our parents, our siblings, our relations, and the general populace, right? That's why we're here. So let's fight together for this good life that we have the opportunity, the privilege of having, right? And um, I'm trying to be sure if I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording. All right. So that's all I have for today. Again, I don't have any of my people here, so there's not no question for me. Uh, but feel free, feel free to drop me a question if you have any on that which we have discussed. You know, we've talked about fear. Uh, what are the fears in your life? Anything you want to share with me, anything you want us to discuss concerning the fears in your life. It could be any other thing that we've discussed or other ones because a thousand and one other type of fears other than this thing. These are kind of broad fears, but they could be broken down to smaller fears. So there's a fear in your life that you're struggling with and you want us to uh, share together and break it down for free. You can come chat with me on the open forum or you can come text me, you know, uh, DM me, text me on any of the social platforms where you can't find me and we can chat together and walk through the fear so that you can have the good life that God wants you to have. It's your right. It's your right. It's not a privilege. It's your right. You can have the good life. You came here to have a good life. God did not put you here to have a bad life. He came, he brought you here to have a good life, to have a happy life. Ensure you get it. Don't let anybody steal that from you. All right. God bless you. Till next week, or well, when I come back again, uh, have a great week ahead, you know, and enjoy a good life this week. God bless you. Bye bye.